In early 2013, the City of Saskatoon began planning one of the largest construction projects in Saskatoon's history. The project, named Bridging to Tomorrow, included the replacement of the Downtown Traffic Bridge, one of Saskatoon's original river crossings, and the building of a new North Commuter Parkway in the north end of Saskatoon that would include a river crossing and connecting roadways. Bridging to Tomorrow would provide significant benefits to the citizens of Saskatoon and the province. Replacing the traffic bridge, which was closed in August 2010 due to serious deterioration, would support the growing city centre by once again allowing motorists, pedestrians and cyclists to cross the river between the downtown and residential areas in the south. The new North Commuter Parkway would support the transportation needs of citizens who live in Saskatoon's northeast and work in the Marquis and North Industrial areas. So this project is about investing in Saskatoon's future for the benefit of everybody. Uh, for the past number of years, we've been working on our growth plan, which is a vision of the infrastructure and amenities that the city is going to need uh, to achieve a quality of life that we all deserve and expect. And this project is one of the first uh, real deliverables of that vision. The project was funded through a grant from P3 Canada and the City of Saskatoon. This funding model allowed the city to work with a private sector entity who would design, build, finance, operate and maintain the entire project, including related roadways, bridge structures, walkways, bikeways and all infrastructure for 30 years. After that time, responsibility for the project will be transferred to the City of Saskatoon. In June 2014, P3 Canada announced the Government of Canada would contribute up to $66 million of the direct construction costs to build the North Commuter Parkway and replace the traffic bridge. At the same time, the province of Saskatchewan announced a contribution of $50 million to help fund the building of the parkway, with the City of Saskatoon contributing the remaining funds to complete the project. With funding confirmed, the city began the work of finding the best builder for the project. In September 2015, after a competitive request for qualifications and request for proposals process, a contract was awarded to Graham Commuter Partners. Together with the city, GCP began the mammoth undertaking of bringing Bridging to Tomorrow to life and an ambitious goal to have the entire project completed and operational by October 2018 was set. We've been delivering general contracting, design build, construction management, and P3 services to the building, industrial, and infrastructure sectors in Saskatchewan for over 90 years. For this project, we brought together BBGI and Graham Capital, leveraging the talents and expertise of two leading highway engineering, construction, and maintenance firms to deliver this massive project to the city of Saskatoon. One of the most important factors in the project for everyone involved included ensuring the unique environment that surrounded both project sites was protected and conserved as much as possible. There was also a strong focus on the safety of workers and the public during construction. At the traffic bridge, surrounding areas included beautiful recreational space enjoyed by residents year-round. At the North Commuter Parkway Bridge and Roadways, much of the land and river area were largely untouched pristine and beautiful, as well as ecologically sensitive with respect to the Northeast Swale. Over the course of the entire project, design and construction methods were developed in consideration of the environment we were working in. Together with Graham Commuter Partners, the City obtained regulatory approvals and permits from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, Transport Canada, the Saskatchewan Ministry of Environment, the Saskatchewan Water Security Agency, and the Mewasan Valley Authority. The city also worked closely with Miwasan to ensure the safety of the public during the construction process. The South Saskatchewan River and riverbanks are busy places during the summer, so every measure possible was taken to ensure the public stayed away from the construction zone and out of the water during construction. Graham places the health and safety of our people and the public, the protection of our communities and environment above all else. Far more than regulatory compliance, our ongoing commitment to health and safety is a core value and a commitment of our leadership. As such, this project gave us the opportunity to showcase our strong safety culture, of which we're extremely proud. Another important factor in the project was the potential to contribute to jobs and economic growth. For this project, we brought together Graham Infrastructure and contracted the local firm ASL Paving 
to operate and maintain the project. During peak construction periods, we had over 175 workers on the project, and we estimate that over 1 million hours of work went into building the new bridges and roadways. From bridge designers to subcontractors to laborers, most of these jobs were filled locally by people from Saskatoon and the region. Decisions made about replacing the city's traffic bridge were based on several studies, traffic needs assessments, and functional planning studies. We also did extensive consultations with citizens and found that residents wanted the new traffic bridge to be a community bridge that would be cyclist and pedestrian friendly. And because the traffic bridge was the very first non-rail river crossing uh, in the city of Saskatoon, it was very near and dear to the hearts of many residents. They wanted us to find a way to preserve the look of the original bridge, and we did. The, the new bridge uses a modern truss structure with four spans, and as the conventional weathering steel and coatings are exposed to the elements, the bridge will eventually become a uniform brown color tone, which will be the same as the original bridge. But that's where the similarities end. The new traffic bridge is wider and taller with traffic lanes that can accommodate emergency service vehicles and wide pathways on both sides to serve pedestrians and cyclists. It is expected to accommodate average traffic volumes of 11,000 vehicles per day upon opening, with capacity for over 20,000 vehicles per day. On the south side of the bridge, three meter wide pathways extend down the bridge embankment on each side of Victoria Avenue and connect to the Miwasan Trail, enhancing pedestrian and cyclist access between the new bridge and Rotary Park. Construction on the new traffic bridge began in December 2015. The first step in the process was to build a berm in the river where crews could work. Approximately 20,000 cubic meters of stone and clay were brought in to construct the berm. The berm also provided an area upon which the existing bridge could be placed during demolition, a project which in itself required hundreds of hours of planning and preparation. We worked with a licensed blasting specialist, the city's emergency measures organization, police service, and fire department to develop detailed demolition plans that outline the blast procedure. Cleanup and safety measures were also put in place to ensure public and occupational health and safety. Because explosive devices were being used to take down the bridge, we put in place a designated exclusion zone with a radius of 250 metres from the blasting site to limit public access near the site. Residents and businesses located within that zone were notified in writing and provided with information regarding their personal safety, including the direction to remain indoors during the demolition. We also utilized the City of Saskatoon notification system, Notify Now, to send out messages prior to the blast as well as once the blast was completed. To further ensure public safety, the Saskatoon Police Service as well as contracted safety officers were in place on the site around the perimeter of the exclusion zone and the Saskatoon Fire Department was on the water monitoring and patrolling the South Saskatchewan River as well as the river bank. It was a huge operation and overall it went really well. On January 10th, 2016, thousands of Saskatoon residents gathered on the Broadway Bridge to watch two sections of the old traffic bridge come down using explosives. And on February 8th, 2016, after a berm was built on the north side of the river, an additional span was demolished. Watching the traffic bridge come down was definitely felt like the end of an era, but it's the beginning of a new area. The new bridge is going to provide a much needed link for uh, commuters, be they in a vehicle or cycling or walking. Um, and this is going to actually be the best cycling and pedestrian uh, link across the river in the whole city. Shortly after the demolition of the old traffic bridge on February 12, 2016, federal, provincial and city representatives gathered to officially declare the Bridging to Tomorrow project underway. With summer coming, crews at the traffic bridge worked quickly to prepare for construction so that disruption to river navigation could be minimized. The bridge was constructed in sections, with the first focus on refurbishing the South End River Pier, the concrete column that supports the bridge deck. A new concrete footing was constructed, the old pier shaft was encased in new concrete, and the pier cap was cast on top. Crews also drilled piles to build the south abutment, the structure at the end of the bridge where the main bridge structure rests. By the end of May, this work was complete and the berms were removed, making room for summer river enthusiasts. 
Over the summer, concrete work continued and the Southbridge piers were now able to support the installation of the first south span of the new bridge. Both the north and south abutment walls were also completed over the summer. By late fall, crews had constructed an in-river berm on the north side of the river so they could start building the two north piers and the north and south bridge abutments. And in January 2017, just one year after the first phase of bridge demolition, the final components of the original bridge were taken down and the north piers were complete. Graham was founded in Saskatchewan over nine decades ago. We have deep roots in this province. So to witness and be part of this significant change and rebirth was deeply meaningful to a lot of our workers and team, myself included. With crews ready to build the centre bridge spans, the in-river berm was modified to create an island in the middle of the river with a temporary steel bridge connecting to the north bank. By March, trusses were being constructed and work to build the new bridge deck could begin. April 2017 was the halfway point for construction of the project and work was on schedule. Structural steel installation of three of the four bridge spans was complete and work to build the Victoria Avenue retaining wall and other retaining walls around Rotary Park began. Summer 2017 saw the bridge really taking shape. All the structural steel was in place and deck panels were being installed to create the subfloor of the new bridge. Crews were also working on the Saskatchewan Crescent overpass and retaining walls in Rotary Park and utility work in the area continued. By the end of the summer, the concrete deck was complete. Throughout the fall and winter of 2017 and into 2018, new barriers were installed. Road work surrounding the new traffic bridge also continued into the spring of 2018. In October 2018, right on schedule, the new traffic bridge was complete and on October 2nd, the bridge opened to traffic. The North Commuter Parkway Bridge was built to support the transportation needs of citizens who live in Saskatoon's northeast and work in the Marquis and North Industrial areas, reduce traffic on the city's existing bridges, and to accommodate pedestrians and cyclists. The North Commuter Parkway was planned to alleviate growing traffic congestion on Circle Drive North, Warman Road, and Atridge Drive. In its first year of operation, over 20,000 vehicles are projected to use the bridge each day. At a population of 400,000, about 50,000 vehicles will cross the bridge each day. As required by the Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code, the bridge section was designed and constructed to a minimum life cycle of 75 years. The project also included a pedestrian crosswalk at the intersection of Wanuskewin Road and Marquis Drive. The Miwasan Trail currently runs along Wanuskewin Road in the general area of the project. However, provisions have been made to provide a future Miwasan Trail crossing at the parkway on both sides of the river. Construction on the North Commuter Parkway began in early 2016. As there's no development in that area of the river, the first thing we needed to do was construct an access roadway to get to the construction site. In the spring, once all the regulatory approvals were in place, we built a cofferdam in the river. This provided a dry area upon which we could construct the first in-river pier. After several months of preparations, residents would really start to see the bridge take shape, with concrete pier construction and steel spans being put into place. By fall, Pier 1 was nearly complete, and work had begun on Pier 2, as well as the east and west embankment. As the project entered its second year, two piers on the bridge were complete, and work on the first bridge span had begun. In mid-January, Saskatchewan highways and roadways were busy as the first of 63 girders which would support the new bridge arrived in Saskatoon. Each span of the Parkway Bridge contains nine steel girder lines running end to end. Each girder line is made up of segments and each segment measures three meters tall by one meter wide and is 33 and a half meters long. They each weigh over 52,000 kilograms. To give that some perspective, the weight of the steel alone in the bridge is about 6.6 .6 million pounds. At the halfway point of construction in April 2017, all the girders were in place on the west half of the bridge. Crews relocated the berm from the west side of the river to the east side so that construction of the third and final pier and girder installation on the two remaining east spans could begin. Within a few months' time, structural steel was in place and work on the final in-river pier had begun. 
crews were also installing deck panels on the west half of the bridge. By fall, all the in-river piers were in place, the structural steel for the remaining two spans of the bridge was installed, and the project was progressing as planned. But before the bridge was fully completed, on June 21st, National Indigenous Peoples Day, a special event was held to rename the North Commuter Parkway Bridge. The city feels it's important to commemorate people and events in our history. In response to the Truth and Reconciliation Calls to Action, the North Commuter Parkway Bridge was named Chief Mistawasis Bridge. Naming this bridge after the head of the Prairie Tribe and the individual who signed Treaty 6 in 1876 was a significant moment. As a community, it is our strong hope and desire to ensure we are inclusive of everyone who lives in our community and calls Saskatoon home. And a very important part of this process was, uh, was uh, what, what is the potential impact for future generations and the name that we select. And, and Chief Mistawasis was really uh, stood out because, uh, because it, he is such a forgotten man and yet he played such a, a key role in who we are today. You know, he was, he was the man, uh, the leader in 1876 who was selected by the Cree people of this whole area. You know, there were a lot of chiefs. My, I ha my community had a chief, you know, uh, 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 Muscade and uh, Beardies and all these communities had, they all had chiefs. They got together and they said, okay, Mr. Oasis and Ataka Group will stand and speak on our behalf. To connect to the new bridge, the city needed to add over 10 kilometers of roadway to Marquis Drive and McCormick Drive. The new McCormick Drive is now a five-lane roadway from the east side of the bridge to Central Avenue and has four lanes continuing to the east. Central Avenue was expanded to four lanes from Attridge Drive to the new connection with McCormick Drive. To accommodate heavy traffic, the intersection at Central Avenue and Attridge Drive was made wider, with double turning lanes for people turning northbound, which greatly improves traffic flow. Throughout this project, the protection and preservation of the environment was important. In planning for the Parkway roads, one of the biggest factors we needed to consider was the unique ecological environment within the Northeast Swale and other lands that the project passes through. So we needed to ensure animals wouldn't be overly affected and that noise and light pollution would be minimized. All of these factors were included in the, in the Northeast Swale Development Guidelines, which were developed in advance of the project. Building the parkway roadways involved clearing, topsoil stripping, and ditch excavation for the twinning and extension of Central Avenue to intersect with McCormick Drive, which was also extended from the Aspen Ridge neighborhood to the northwest to connect to the bridge. Earth was moved to consolidate the ground under the future roadway in the Northeast Swale, and two clay berms were installed through the Northeast Swale to prevent water from draining into the work zone. This work was monitored by GCP's environmental consultant and audited by the city's technical advisor. By fall 2016, work to construct storm sewers for the new lanes of Central Avenue between Attridge Drive and Fedoric Drive had begun, and crews began to relocate overhead lines. Improvements to the intersection of Attridge Drive and Central Avenue and the realignment of the eastbound off-ramp from Circle Drive East to Attridge Drive were also well underway. As the cold weather approached in December 2016, earthworks and underground utility construction for roadways connecting to the North Commuter Parkway wrapped up for the season. However, an early spring allowed crews to begin work to twin Central Avenue north of Attridge Drive earlier than in a normal construction season, as well as to construct a new median, sound walls, and to begin landscaping. By June, the twinning of Central Avenue continued and the McCormick Drive extension had begun. We are very proud to participate in this historic project. We are the major road building subcontractor. As well, we'll subcontract to Graham Commuter Partners to operate and maintain the project after it opens. Both our local business, as well as our employees and their families, will benefit both during and after construction. In August 2017, the new southbound lanes on Central Avenue from Attridge Drive to Fedoric Road opened to traffic and new northbound lanes were being reconstructed. 
Sound wall construction was nearly complete along Attridge Drive east and west of Central Avenue. From March to spring 2018, the final work on the Attridge Drive and Central Avenue intersection improvements and the widened Marquis Drive and Wanaskewin Road intersection were substantially complete and open to traffic. Newly completed pathways and bikeways line the new roadways and new sound walls have been installed to shield adjacent residents from roadway noise. Yeah, we're very proud to have completed this project on time and on budget. We've got a new traffic bridge in the downtown with all the connecting pathways and cycling tracks and, and of course the roadways. We've got a new Chief Mistawasis bridge in the north and all the pathways associated with that work as well. And that's the kind of infrastructure that Saskatoon needs in order to sustain our quality of life and even improve our quality of life as we know it.